Thank you and welcome to our 2020 Virtual Tech Edge. We are now bringing to you our cloud phone session presented by Darren Walters. Darren has been in the communications arena since 1992 and has been consulting and designing high availability voice and data networks for customers across the state of Kansas and beyond. If you have any questions during the presentation, please utilize the chat box. If you have any technical issues, please try to reconnect first. And if that does not help, email our moderator at the email address listed on the screen. Again, thank you for joining our cloud phone session. Well, thank you everybody for joining our 2020 Tech Edge. I know we're coming to you virtual this year. I wish uh, we were all together and could see everybody and talk to all our great customers, but um, and we also appreciate you joining our cloud phone session today. Um, my name is Darren Walters. I'm the sales engineer here at Next Tech. I've been with the company 25 years um, in cloud phone and premise phone and every, every type of uh, communication infrastructure, fiber, copper, it is kind of falls in my bailiwick. So I help customers every day design and develop solutions to meet their needs. So I'm Kevin Carlene. I've been here 27 years, just, just a little bit longer than Darren, and we've been working together on phone systems years ago and helping customers out with all that. And I've pretty much been working on the cloud phone since the word go when we first started this probably seven, eight years ago already now. So that's pretty much where I'm at. So just a little side note, um, Kevin is getting ready to retire after a long and illustrious career <laughs> um, of 27 years that you said. Yep. And I've known Kevin since 91, at, starting at tech school, and, and he's been an absolutely fantastic technician for us. Um, uh, just a great resource and an, an even better person. So we're gonna hate to see Kevin go, but we appreciated him uh, joining us today because he's really had a huge hand in bring, making our cloud phone service what it is today. So with that said, we wanted to start with a little overview of our solution and kind of how we do what we do here at Next Tech with cloud phone. So <clears throat> what we wanna do right now is just take you through a little overview of our cloud phone solution. Um, you know, basically we are what I would consider on kind of our second generation of cloud phone. We've been doing voice, voice over IP and hosted PBX for well over 10 years now. And we're kind of on our second generation, third actually, but um, second full generation of software back in for our cloud phone. And <clears throat> really uh, we've kept improving the solution along the way. And the biggest thing that we've done is really position the product to be different um, in terms of the way we deliver it than our competitors. And what I mean by that is that we do not, um, our standard deployment is not an over-the-top deployment. We try and create a separate physical network for the voice devices um, so that we're not playing on the customer's network and we don't have the quality and security issues um, that, we, that you would on some other solutions. And, you know, it's a constant um, education process in terms of the customers um, in explaining really what over-the-top means and how that relates to voice and how um, there's a big difference between, you know, the Vonages, the eight by eights, the Ring Centrals, the, um, you know, the Skype, some of the voice over IP providers that do appear over the top. And so what over the top is, is basically, um, you know, we use your existing internet connection, we use your existing network, your existing switching infrastructure. I will configure some phones, um, send them out to you You'll plug them into the wall. You'll come out of the phone and come into your computer or desktop device. Um, then we'll port, port your numbers over to our, my service and away we go. Well, you know, we really need to do a better job at managing bandwidth, managing security, and managing the quality of those phone calls rather than just, hey, plug this thing in and, and start dialing away. Now those services are very inexpensive um, and that, that is a real uh, legitimate issue but they're, they're nowhere near what I would call a telco grade offering. And we do offer an over the top flavor of our cloud phone, um, but it's, it's, it's niche customers are very, very few. Um, <clears throat> really the biggest, the biggest reason that we decide to, to deploy our service with a separate physical network is again, we wanna make sure that we can control the quality. We wanna make sure that we have visibility into the network, we wanna make sure that we have an extra separate connection to you, um, from us to you, rather than using your existing internet connection. 
and we want to make sure that we have visibility into the router so that when we uh, monitor your voice network, um, we can see what's going on. If you've got some call quality issues, um, we, can, we can quickly go out and look at those, um, do some MOS scoring to see what's going on, and uh, you know, have a little bit uh, more telco grade offering. Over the top makes that very, very difficult. Because as you guys know, when you're uh, just simply surfing the internet or you're going out and using voice over IP, um, and you get what you get. You know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Um, as a telephone company, we've made the decision to offer something a little bit better than that. And so that's what we've done. From a security issue, um, we install routers at the edge. We do separate cabling, we do separate PoE switches, and we provide the phones. Now, we've talked to a lot of customers that say, well, can I just buy the phones? Or 8x8 wants to sell me the phones, and then I'll just pay them for the service. Well, that's all fine and good, but as we'll talk later, um, later in this session, you know, there's some, some firmware upgrades and some patches and some stuff that gets loaded onto our desktop phones to provide some security, to give them a hook to our meta switch that are very important. And so we just don't use any SIP device and plug it in and hope for the best. So we really do a lot of work to make sure that from the handset to us to the rest of the world is secure and, and as quality as possible. Um, buying the phones is typically not a great idea if you're getting it as a part of the service. So <clears throat> for instance, if you buy your handsets, you own them, they're yours. If you switch services, maybe those phones will work with the new service, maybe they won't, but you're stuck with them. The way we do it is we make the phones a part of the service. There are no capital investment or upfront costs. And the reason that we do that is because if something happens to the phone, we'll fix it. The labor's covered, the hardware's covered. Um, if for some reason there's a new handset that comes out, you'll be able to migrate to that handset without just you know, having to spend that money all over again. So it really works better because the cloud phone is a service, we offer the handset <clears throat> as a part of that service as well. So it's a big differentiator. You know, a lot of times clients will think, well, I can save some money on my monthly if I buy my handsets up front. But after 36, 48, or 60 months, they may be switching services, they may be deployed on a new back end, and those phones are going to have to be rebought anyway. And as fast as technology is moving, we really want to make sure that we can flow with that. And, <clears throat> and including those endpoint devices in as a part of the service is a big, big step to doing that. So the next item that we really wanted to talk about um, is a couple things. Number one is um, any anytime you're dealing with cloud phone deployment or hosted PBX, um, SIP trunk, anything like that, um, number portability is a big a big issue. Um, numbers aren't able to be easily ported from everywhere in the state of Kansas. Um, most places they are. There's some areas that they're not. Um, there's some challenges on uh, multi-site deployments if you've got three locations in Kansas, one in Missouri, and maybe one in Nebraska. So all those bring up some challenges. We've got um, a relationship with a number port um, intermediary. And along with the, the telco background and experience that we have is that it's a lot easier for us to deal with some of the number portability as opposed to some of our competitors and some of the other people out in the market. And an example of that is, <clears throat> is simply number porting. You know, there's some small areas in Kansas where you just can't port a number. So what our competitors end up doing is they end up taking the customer's main published number and then forwarding that back in to an 800 number with Vonage or 8x8 and then giving them new sets of DIDs. Well, they're just bouncing that call. And so really that's not, that doesn't lend itself to a long-term solution. So we've got, through some of our telco relationships and with uh, bandwidth.com, who's our intermediary, we've got some options to, to get around some of those challenges. We've got the background to do it. The other thing that we wanted to touch on just briefly is, as some of you may know, there's been a couple of new 911 laws enacted here this past year, and there's one more coming in 2021. Now, the first two laws were pretty simple in terms of their requirements to the customers, and they were uh, Carrie's Law and Ray Bombs Act. And quite simply, what, they, what the first two laws meant were um, we don't want to have to make you dial an 8 or a 9 to access a trunk group to dial 911. So we want, if somebody picks up a phone and dials 911, all those systems have to be set up to pass that through. Now, any system that is purchased, uh, manufactured, or deployed right now has to be compliant with those two laws. The second law is 
when we make a 911 call, we need to be able to have some type of in-system notification that one of our extensions dialed 911. So for example, um, if I work in a bank and somebody down in the mailroom dials 911, I need to send an alert to somebody saying, hey, extension 1417 in the mailroom dialed 911. We've got to let the people on site know um, because we don't all work in small offices where we know everything that's going on. So the on-site notification, and that can be a simple text message to the phone, it can be an email, it can be a voice message, it can be a variety of flavors, but those two things have to be in existence today. And so we know that some of our competitors are not 100% compliant, but uh, it's something that you definitely want to check into. Um, those are serious issues that need to, be, uh, need to be addressed properly. The next law that goes into effect next year is basically a more defined location for a 911 call. So for example, if I'm in a, <clears throat> in a grade school building and one of the teacher's classrooms dials 911, I need to be able to tell the local 911 center or PSAP where that call came from. So for example, I need to be able to tell it, hey, XYZ High School called 911, it came from teacher X, her room number is 237, and um, to give the dispatchers an exact location of where that is. In some of the bigger office buildings, um, some of the multi-site campus environments, you know, 911 comes from the main address, but it could be another building, another floor, or with voice over IP and the mobility aspect of it, I could be using my desk phone or my session app in St. Louis. And if I call 911, they're gonna show up here at Next Tech. So those issues need to, be, <clears throat> need to be addressed and dealt with, and those are coming next year. And so those are two very important things um, to note. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to message those in, into the uh, messaging center. We'll pick those up and answer those, and we'll also have some time to answer some of those questions at the end. You know, another thing that really um, is an important aspect that we wanted to touch on that really separates our service from some of the other um, offerings is basically our, the ease of use of our mobility. Um, it's very, very simple, very powerful. And so with me, I have Kevin Carlene, and we'll, uh, we'll take you through um, how to move calls around with the app. So we've got uh, mobile options for both smartphone, Android, and Apple, as well as tablet and laptop. So real quick, Kevin's gonna show us what the application looks like on the laptop. Okay, so Max you see is running in a tray. I popped it up, you can see that I'm online and I have Cherie's on a phone call and you can see Mark's in a call and Max is in a call. So I have contacts, They're, everybody in your business group is automatically in there and then I can make them, make them favorites. So I'll call Darren or I'll give Darren a chat message to give me a call. And I've got the chat launched on my iPhone. It says, Darren, can you give me a call? Like Will see do. Darren's typing. Send. I'll call him. Hit one button. And I'll accept his call. Hey, this is Darren. Hey. So if I needed to park Darren's call, I could park it, or I can also record the conversation. I can have a headset on, mute my mic, and if I want to put him on hold, I can put him on hold. And I'm hearing the hold music. Hey, Darren. Hey, I'm back. back. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this call real quick from my cell phone to my desk phone since I've walked back in the office. So, one button. Now I've got you on my desk phone. Hey, Darren. Hey, hey. Talk, to you later. talk to you later. See ya. So what we're gonna do is show you the same thing in reverse, but I'm gonna show you what the phone view looks like. So we'll jump over to the UC Max app and Kevin just sent me a message. Hey, Darren, can you give me a call? Will do. So I'll hit the call button. Intercom. And it's calling Kevin. I accept the call. I'll mute so we don't have any feedback. So again, if I want to switch the call, <clears throat> you can see in the views here, I've got the microphone, keypad, speaker, hold button. Uh, I can add him to my favorites, and I can also do video, which is not active, and I can switch the call. So it's just a switch button to go from my uh, mobile device to the desk phone. So I'll hit that button. You can see the phone is ringing. I've answered it and picked it up and it's off the mobile app.
So now that we've showed you guys a little bit about what our mobility features do and how they operate and how quick and easy they are to use, we want to talk a little bit about some of the future roadmap um, elements of the cloud phone. You know, we do a lot of work in develop, developing all of our products and solutions here at Next Tech, but cloud phone we put a specific emphasis on in terms of long-term strategy. Um, some of the things that we're looking at are, uh, for our cloud phone is what is our next generation of handsets going to be? Uh, currently, we're using our the Polycom VVX uh, 4, 5, and 600 series phones. Um, we're also looking at moving to the Vantage phones going forward, and I think that's the CCX series. Um, we're also looking at deploying uh, wireless handsets and vetting some of those devices so that we've got 802.11 compliant handsets. Um, we are looking at some enhanced call center functionality for reporting, recording, um, call management with agents um, in co some contact center formats. Uh, the final thing that we're looking at is some operator console functionality so that we can give you know, a single pane screen view of really an entire organization in terms of being able to move calls, see present status, and really kind of have a whole view of being able to move, move calls around from a single point. But a lot of uh, efforts are also going on in terms of trying to navigate where our, uh, really our compatibility and our handoff is going to be with Microsoft Teams. You know, obviously we want things to play nice with each other. We want our session app and our cloud phone uh, to really join well with Microsoft Teams um, through the dial pad in Teams to our session app, uh, make sure that people can uh, keep their DID numbers and not have to get a new fake number. And so we're putting a lot of efforts towards that. The, the products and the solutions and the software are constantly moving around. So we're trying to navigate where that's gonna be. But um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask Kevin while he was here, um, you know, what are some of the things that you guys do? I know you spend a lot of time testing and vetting hardware. Um, some of it makes it out the other side and some of it doesn't. But give us an idea of, of what you guys do when you get a new product that we want to see how well it works with our service. So, right, we, uh, we boot up the phones and we get them to work in just like the customer would have them on site. And we test everything. We test all the features. We test the software. And... Uh, if everything has software, even the headsets now, they're software driven. So sometimes you run into a like a Plantronics software issue on a headset. And you work with Plantronics and Polycom to get those things fixed. So and then we will also work with MetaSwitch to get endpoint packs put on the MetaSwitch so then we can test out the phones correctly. And I think that's one important thing to mention. You know, we get a lot of requests for, you know, can I use this phone on your cloud phone? Can I use this phone? I've already got these, you know, these Cisco handsets or, the, or whatever the case may be. Um, but the key thing is that there are service packs that get installed on these phones. And that, that basically allows us some security protections as well as some configuration um, tightening capabilities with MetaSwitch. So it's not as easy as just saying, hey, I've got this cool mm -hmm. Yealink phone. I want to use it on your cloud phone. You know, that creates some challenges. And so we want to make sure that, um, everything that we uh, want to work and that does function actually does and that we don't have an incompatibility issue or a security loophole because we're putting a, a non-approved phone on our cloud phone. But we do get that question a lot. And I know I've been over to <clears throat> your office several times when you're testing new product. Um, I think the last one I remember is testing some ATA devices, which takes a SIP, I, SIP IP signal and turns it into an analog port for a cordless phone, alarm system, fax machine, whatnot. You know, I know that when we were looking at those products, you guys were testing those, and that was almost like a phone system behind a phone system. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. <clears throat> so give us an idea of what what some of the complexities were in making really two different systems talk to each other, and the end product in our analog devices is really a seamless, great working thing. Yeah, so, so when we plug in an ATA, it's an analog terminal adapter to a uh, Cisco router or a Adtran router, they all have to play well together to make a phone call. And so we run through all the proxy settings and the testing, the just a general call through test plan to call international, interlata, interlata, and all those nine one one. We test everything out, everything out like that. And it's crazy to think about. You know, it should seem easy because an analog device is simply pick up and get tile tone. Yeah, it works off DTMF, and you hang up, and the call is over. But you know, taking that really simplistic analog function and turning it into an advanced SIP IP mechanism that can be resolved at, at the other side is a whole different issue. So we're taking old technology, piling it on top of the new one and making sure that it does work flawlessly and works within the five nines that we, that we want all of our services to be in. The, uh, 
<clears throat> the last thing I want to talk about just a little bit is um, if we have, uh, you know, we really take a lot of input from customers, from business customers like you all in terms of what features and functionality you're looking at, you know, and we really uh, try and vet a lot of different solutions and um, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. We work all year round, every yeah. week, testing products, vetting things to see if we can bring a solution to our customers in conjunction with our cloud phone um, that's viable for you guys. Like I say, if it doesn't work for the end user, then we don't have any time no. for it. So, With that said, um, that wraps up our uh, session today. I appreciate you all guys all jumping on. Um, for all of you that want to talk maybe about pricing or you want to look at individual specific scenarios, you have additional questions, um, any feedback that you might have if you're an existing customer. I know that this was a short time frame on this virtual tech edge, but we're going to open it up for some additional time this afternoon. So what I'll do is if you guys will um, message me or chat me your email address, or you can email it to my email address, which is on the screen um, on, our, on our thank you slide, um, email me. And what I'll do is if we have enough interest, I'll just uh, invite everybody to a Teams call at 2 o'clock today, and we'll deep dive into anything that you want to uh, go into. We can talk about pricing. If you've got some individual applications that you want to talk about, um, we can do it. But we'll just uh, give, any, give you an avenue to uh, get a little bit of extra time to uh, get some more information. So again, at 2 o'clock today, if you guys are interested, send me your email address. I'll invite you to a Teams call, and we'll uh, go forward. But with that... Kevin, uh, we thank you for joining us and uh, thank you for attending the 2020 version of Tech Edge. Thank you and welcome to our 2020 Virtual Tech Edge. We are now bringing you... Thank you and welcome to our... There we go. Sorry about that. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Um, again, for the um, afternoon Teams meeting, if you guys are interested, just uh, message me in the chat box or you can email me at uh, dwalters at next-tech.com. That's D-W-A-L-T-E-R-S at N-E-X-T-E-C-H.com. And uh, we'll invite you to a Teams meeting uh, later at two and we can go into any specific things regarding your application or any questions that you might have. Um, we did have a couple questions, um, one on the one on the chat and one off the chat. But the uh, the first question that we had was with mobile capabilities and soft phone features. Do you think desk phones will eventually become non-existent? Um, I think I think eventually they will. Um, you know what we're seeing right now when it comes down to it, really the phone on your desk is really just a voice endpoint. I mean, it's made to make a call and take a call. Um, it is, it's, uh, that's really what its purpose is. I think when you talk about, you know, the chat and the messaging, the present status, um, and eventually, you know, video chat with that, um, I think the mobility piece, both on the, you know, a smartphone device or desktop device, I think that's where all the cool features and development's gonna be, especially when, when things start, um, you know, hopefully playing in with Teams nicely. So we'll see what happens. Um, the second question that we had is, um, Referring to the 911 laws, who is actually responsible for complying to those laws? And I think that's that's an important question because basically what it states is on the, on the first generation of, of laws that hit um, any um, us as a, a provider on on systems that we sell, like on premise systems or any system manufactured, you know, as of that date need need to be compliant. You know, everybody that's got a phone system out there now, whether it's 10 years old or five years old or two years old. Um, you're pretty much grandfathered in. Um, the difference is going to be with our cloud phone, you know, we're providing that as a service. So that puts a little bit more of the onerous on, on us to make sure that um, the 911 functionalities work properly. So I didn't want everybody to, to freak out and think that, you know, we've got to make a change here real quick because our system doesn't do that. So um, that, I want to make that delineation. And so 
with that, I'll uh, turn it over to uh, Jimmy for the prizes. All right. Uh, thanks, Darren. Um, I'm Jimmy Olmstead uh, with Next Tech. Um, I want to thank you guys for attending the Cloud Phone session today. Um, and uh, also want to thank the sponsors. Uh, sponsors were Lenovo, Axiom, Intel, Cinex, Great American Financial, SonicWall, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and Next Tech Wireless. Uh, we will do a drawing for a uh, $100 gift card. Um, and I've already done that drawing and it will go to Jordan M. Uh, so Jordan, we will uh, we'll email you the $100 uh, Amazon gift card and uh, you will get that. And uh, there is two more sessions uh, starting about now. So uh, if you guys that uh, you guys enjoy the rest of your day and uh, uh, have a good weekend. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys.